What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and today we're back to talk about, you guessed it, Warhammer 40k. And I guess this is more 30k, but today we are talking about the missing Primarchs, the Lost and the Forgotten, the 2nd and the 11th Legions, and yesterday we had a little inkling that GW sent out I believe it was like their Facebook page and stuff like that. So basically yesterday was 2 22 of 2022. Something that won't happen again for another 200 years. So Tuesday, as people were calling it, was a huge deal uh, for the amount of twos in the date. And of course, there is a legion that is lost and forgotten to the annals of time in the universe of Warhammer. And that is none other than the second legion, its Primarch and its Astartes. So throughout the lore of Warhammer, both pre-heresy and post-heresy, there have been little inklings as to what happened to the Lost Legions. Were they purged? Were they torn into the warp? Like, the theories go on and on and on as to who these people could be, what happened to them, where are they now, will they be returning? And for the longest time, people just assumed that the 2nd and the 11th were just empty placeholders so that the consumer, the player, the wargamer can craft and create their own lore for their own legion of space marines and their own primarch. And people have been doing that for a long, a long time. Essentially, it, it just, the, the imagination is the limit. Like, you can make anything be, you know, the 2nd and the 11th legion in their Primarchs and kind of make it fit in with the lore. And that's pretty much what I did with my interpretation of the 11th Legion. They were, in my opinion, they were called the Celestial Sons. They were, they had their Primarch, El Alec Elric and whatnot. So there's a whole slew of videos on that. If you guys want to check it out, I'll link it at the end of the video. But the playlist has like a ton of videos and I'm still continuing the lore on that. And I'm even working on my own interpretation of the second. So be sure to subscribe for that. But for now, I'm going to be talking about all the clues we have as to who or what these Primarchs and their legions were. So you can almost see what the symbol for the second Legion of Astartes was. But of course, GW had to put cracked glass and kind of make it all mysterious and whatnot. And I don't know about you, but I don't think there's anything behind it. <laughs> like, it's made that way, just so you guys can, like, fill in the blanks. Um, with that being said, there are many instances in the lore that kind of point that these legions did exist. The Emperor did, in fact, create 20 demigods underneath the uh, gene labs of the Himalayan mountains. And Chaos did take them and spread them throughout the galaxy, and the Emperor did reclaim them, and they also fought during the Great Crusade, and perhaps even a little bit into the Heresy. So, what we can infer is that, at one point, the legions of the Ultramarines just grew exponentially. So I think at one point the Ultramarines had like 200 to 300,000 Space Marines in their legion, where the normalcy was about a hundred thousand space marines so you don't just gain that amount of space marines overnight or over a short period of time because the recruitment process for creating a space marine getting recruits a lot of them don't survive so to have their ranks double or even triple that's unheard of like there had to be something that happened and what we believe is that the emperor sent his executioners Lehman Russ and the Space Wolves to purge the Primarch and that said Primarch was the only one at fault for whatever it is he did. So once the Primarch was executed then the Legion which had nothing to do with whatever it is that the Primarch did was inducted into the ranks of the Ultramarines. Now what did the second Legion Primarch do? It could be anything honestly deciding not to fight for the Emperor anymore, deciding that the Imperial way of life, kind of protecting humanity from religion, from Xenos, was not the way. Maybe he sided with Chaos or found out something about Chaos. 
Maybe he found some secret about the Emperor or something like that, and the Emperor had to silence him, and that's what happened. And we can infer this because you, if it was a complete edict of obliteration where everything is indeed purged, um, normally you would just kill everything off. Like, the Emperor hasn't enacted edict of obliterations before, which is any symbols, likeliness, any information of a certain person, place, or idea is purged from records as if they didn't exist. But why would you keep the Astartes? Obviously, the Emperor saw the Space Marines as a tool to be discarded, so if they were already going to be discarded, why not, why not just take them all out in one fell blow? So whatever it is that the Second Legion Primarch did, it was his and only his downfall and misfortune actions. And like, his Astartes had nothing to do with it. But it's like, well, if his Astartes has his gene seed, don't you think that they're more prone to do that? Or there wasn't any revolt or anything like that? Because I don't think an Astarte would just go ahead and let their Primarch go down. Obviously, they're going to try and protect you know, their gene father. And we can kind of infer that this did happen because since the Space Marines, um, they're all weapons of war. But why is it specifically that Lehman Russ and his wolves are known as the Executioners, a.k.a. the Emperor's Lapdog? Um, and that's what Horus took advantage of when he sent them to take out Magnus and the Thousand Suns, which almost did happen. So the Space Wolves know how to fight Astartes, they know how to take down another Primarch, and Lehman Russ would have done it if it weren't for Magnus being such a powerful Psyker, and also allying with Kizich Chaos. Another instance is in the lore, we have a conversation between Malkador the hero, or the Sigilite as it was at that time, talking with Primarch of the Imperial Fists, Rogel Dorn. And Dorn was basically talking about the missing Primarchs, and Malkador says something along the lines of, the Emperor ordered me to erase any information on the 2nd and the 11th Primarchs from your memory. However, he wasn't able to do this complete erasure, so their memories are heavily clouded. But it's still there. So, and that confirms that, again, the 2nd and the 11th were a thing. They actually did meet and interacted with other Primarchs and whatnot. So, I mean, Malgador confirmed it. Along those same lines, I forget who it was specifically, but I think it was Horus and another Primarch. They were talking in a hall of statues. Each statue, or plinth, I believe it was called, was sculpted in the image of the 20 Primarchs. However, the plinth for the 2nd and the 11th was crushed, leaving behind rubble. Again, why would you go ahead and just leave the rubble there, if not for a reminder to the other Primarchs that, hey, this has happened before. Any insurrection, any revolt, anything that goes against the Imperium and the Emperor's wishes will be sentence for obliteration and i think that's kind of why the emperor didn't just completely remove the plinths and make it seem as if they never existed he left the rubble there for a reason and then we have another instance in i believe it was the adeptus custody codex the most recent one where in Ontera there are some jails heavily guarded like there are prisoners that if they escaped it would be a threat for the galaxy a threat to the imperium and one such prisoner is known as Subject or Prisoner 11. Hmm. <laughs> what other important notion does the number 11 signify? The 11th Legion, the Primarch of the 11th. So maybe, I know it doesn't directly interact with the second Primarch, but if they have Prisoner 11, maybe they have Prisoner 2. So maybe the Primarchs are currently held in prison on Terra for their actions. Because obviously, Primarchs are essentially demigods. You wouldn't just kill one without a huge reason to. Keep them in prison, let them out when the time is right, use them as a weapon of war against your enemies, or maybe Psychro indoctrinate them for years upon years make them forget their past actions, rewrite their brain to be more subservient, etc. So, 
Maybe they are on Terra the whole time, maybe not, but Prisoner 11, will we ever know who, what, or what it is? Time will only tell. But it's interesting to think of it that way because like for the longest time GW was hush hush on the 2nd and the 11th. But throughout the years they've given us little bits and pieces of information to kind of help us shape the way these two Primarchs and their legions interacted with the grand world, the universe around them. Even between two of the most important Primarchs, Horus and that of Sanguinius, they even talk about their lost brothers. We all know Sanguinius was trying to find a cure for the Red Thirst, and the reason why he was trying so hard to cure this affliction for his Astartes is because he didn't want what happened to the Lost Primarchs and their legion to happen to his legion. He didn't want them to get expunged, obliterated. So that's why he was being very secretive about trying to cure this ailment, this, this uh, gene defect for his Astartes. And the only person he can find in telling was Horus, his best friend. Because if he told the Emperor, the Emperor might have just pulled the trigger then and there and expunged a defective tool, a defective weapon. Because why have space marines that can go berserk and bloodthirsty, uncontrollable space marines for that matter? Um, so that is another huge contemplation that, hmm, maybe the 2nd and the 11th and their Astartes didn't betray the Imperium. Maybe they had some type of gene deficiency that made them go crazy or hard to control or something like that to the point where they couldn't be used efficiently. And we've seen this throughout the Crusade, like when Horus, or not Horus, when Magnus got to be the Primarch of his legion, they were under strength and they were basically just held in reserves until they could come to full combat power. So something might have happened with that psychically powerful legion that they weren't able to maintain their numbers. Maybe they fought alongside the Space Wolves to purge one of the lost Primarchs in their legion. Like the theories just go on and on and on and it's very fun to ponder and think about what it could be so i've taken all these inklings of lore into account and kind of crafted that to make the second and the 11th of my own fan lore to be as accurate to the current lore as possible so if you guys do want to see my interpretation of this i do have the link at the end of the video so you guys can check out the playlist on the 11th legion the celestial sons and their primarch alec elric and stay tuned because in the coming weeks you will see my interpretation of the second legion and their primarch so you don't want to spoil anything just yet but just know it's there so with that being said guys let me know your thoughts your ideas as to who are these primarchs in their legion and what happened to them did they ally with some Xeno race? Did they get trapped in the warp? Did they travel outside the galaxy? Or maybe they're just being held in reserve until the Emperor needs them once again. So, thank you guys for listening. Can't wait to see your theories down below. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. As always, if you appreciate what we do here at One Mind Syndicate, a like would be really amazing. You can also hit that subscribe button and share with all your friends. And if you do want to support us even more, we do have a Patreon page where a simple dollar a month helps us bring you 40k videos each and every day. As always, this has been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.